Welcome back. I'm Wyatt Goolsby in for Lauren Ashburn. Some feminists are expressing outrage after a Democrat in the House said the party will not withhold financial support for pro-life candidates. But not all women agree. In fact, my next guest is proud to say she does not identify as a feminist. Melissa Braunstein is a contributor for The Federalist and a former State Department speechwriter. So, Melissa, you don't call yourself a feminist. Why not? Um, I don't call myself a feminist. I feel like the movement, while it did great things in the past, uh, does not it does not stand for me. It does not represent me and all the things that it stands for today. As someone who's put my calling as a mother before my career at this point, I don't feel like the movement represents me. Uh, I feel like the movement is very focused on a sense of victimhood, and I don't feel like a victim. I feel like it has not been, in recent years, so men-friendly, and mm -hmm. some of my favorite people, starting with my husband and my father, are men. So for a variety of reasons, I feel like the feminist movement does not speak for me. Well, maybe we can touch on that a little bit more, because you're a professional, mm -hmm. you're a wife, mother of three, yes. as you'd mentioned. Um, tell me a little bit about what's happened in your life, and what do you think the reaction that you've gotten, just based on the choices that you've made? Uh, I'd say that there are people who've told me, first of all, as a conservative, that that makes me not a woman or a questionable woman. Uh, and there are people who have been, I think it's an interesting split telling people that you're a mother and this is what you spend most of your time doing because mm -hmm. you definitely find people who are very supportive and then you have people who see it as a waste of your education. And I find that offensive. I feel like this is something I've chosen to do. This is going to be the most important thing I will do while I'm here on this earth, is doing a good job raising my children. I'm very proud to be doing it. And I find it very fulfilling. And I am much more comfortable with the traditional feminist idea that we should be supporting all women's choices. But unfortunately, I think a lot of people who identify with the feminist movement today would say that my choices are not either valid or the correct ones. Well, and like you said earlier, you had mentioned that there's been so many good things that have happened out of feminism in the past, in past mm -hmm. decades. What about those who say today, though, that there are so many more issues that need to be tackled, the gender pay gap and things like that? I, there are always things that can be done. There are, there's always more work to do. Um, but I would say the gender pay gap, if you look at the numbers, the wage issue is actually a lot closer. It's more like 95 cents on the dollar if you actually work out uh, women who take time out of the workforce like me, it's actually much closer to parity. So that I feel like is overblown and it doesn't do women a good service to say that it's a 77 cents on the dollar disparity that's been debunked. The other thing is that's not my major issue and if feminists really wanted to unite women across the political spectrum, I think there are a lot of other issues they could take on. They're just choosing not to. Well, it's so interesting to hear your perspective. Melissa Braunstein, contributor for The Federalist, thanks so much for talking with us. Thank you.